Howdy all of you delicious people. I'm here today to say that the truth is we are reviewing Iron Man. Ha! Ah, oh my god, it's crazy. Uh, so yeah, it is about time for me to finally go and review Iron Man, the very first film. Really, I would probably always moan and groan because every single origin movie, they take way too much time to really showcase every single bit of powers that a character is to have. So we end up having Iron Man who ends up doing a lot of experimenting through this movie. But while we are to have those experiments, you have also... Uh, Tony Stark giving, or Robert Downey Jr. giving us, like, funny bits going through these, uh, through these, uh, these trials. To where he's smacking into a wall, or he is to, uh, have his robot that is consistently, uh, tossing a fire extinguisher onto him consistently. To where he's only supposed to be there for fire safety, and he's just blowing into uh, Tony regardless. We have it to where this is probably one uh, movie where it really does be like a gateway to open you into other things to where it seems especially that Tony Stark's character was tied into so many movies and Robert Downey Jr. was tied into so many films that you really do over time, after watching this film and then watching more of the Iron Man saga, uh, especially once we get into Captain America's Civil Wars and uh, in Avengers movies, and just kind of see, like, this is the first building blocks of this character who, when we first get to know him and see him, like, we really get to see this character really, like, grow up uh, before our eyes. Like, meaning, like, I know, like, that sounds goofy to say, but we end up having this character who all he cares about is where is the next place to go to have fun. We end up having this character that doesn't care about anything, but where is the next club to go to? What is the next, who is the next girl I'm sleeping with? And where is the... Fun V, where is, the, where is the place to just have fun? That's all that Tony cares about. And he has no accountability, accountability whatsoever for his company. And we end up having uh, Tony just counting the money, not caring uh, where it comes from. And then eventually we end up finding out that Tony realizes where this money is coming from and what it is of what is what is it doing for countries all around the world and then we end up having tony who's like whoa whoa wait a minute like i didn't realize that like me uh me sending something off somewhere was going to affect this great of number of people like, I didn't know that something with my name slapped on it was going to get to, was going to get this far, was going to get this spread out. And so here's the thing. We can kind of take and break down Iron Man as a corporation, as a business, as a, uh, like as a industry kind of movie, if we have Stark Industries, like when kind of breaking this movie down, it is kind of really fascinating the arms race or the uh, chase of which that we get into with Iron Man. Like how perfectly an example would be to say that, like as if a cell phone company was going to push out the iPhone 20, and then all the other cell phone companies like were like, oh my god, they just pushed out the iPhone 20. Oh my god, I need to push out the Motorola 20 or the uh, T-Mobile 20 or the uh, A AT&T 20. I need to push that phone out. We really have it to where this movie is just like that. Where 
we immediately have somebody push out the new fresh thing and immediately we have everybody on an arms race trying to scramble to copy and create uh, that same thing. We end up having reasonably somebody by hook or crook trying to like steal everything from under Tony as he is building this Iron Man creation. And I just find that fascinating. To really have it to where immediately within this same film, we end up having a person who ends up trying to build a much better model than this Iron Man. And eventually, we end up having in the sequels to follow, people trying to copy and paste and try to do exactly what uh, Tony had been successful at doing. And of course, they are just uh, bits and pieces away. To where eventually we end up having this consistent arms race that ends up going throughout this franchise. To just be like, well, if he built that, then I need to come up with some kind of copy to that. Or I'm going to steal his stuff and, and basically just make it my own. Like, that's kind of the interesting thing about the this franchise. You, like, have Iron Man 2, where the military is like, well, we need an Iron Man response, and so they create War Machine. Uh, in Iron Man 3, we end up having reasonably... We have it to where somebody goes and just says, like, well, how about instead of us just uh, creating another man in a can, how about we go and we make this thing way more stealthier and just uh, create extremists and just make people uh, shoot hot fire. <laughs> we make people into freaks so that way we can just like experiment on them that way to figure out how we can make uh, people pretty dang close to uh, a mutant or a mutated like person. So going into this film, I really do think that this movie is kind of really interesting to have us and see this character grow up and realize that he should be held accountable for what his company does because his name is slapped on it but then eventually we end up realizing like and this kind of echoes uh kind of in the ant-man film where eventually we have like hank pym who is realizing that his company is kind of not exactly doing what he wants and so hank starts to like figure out what's going on with his own company uh so like this movie kind of like helps us like figure out what's going to go on with ant-man so that's kind of interesting so going on into this film uh yeah so we really have it to where i think this movie is very much carried by Robert Downey Jr., where I think in the sequels, like, I think they try to make this movie a much more well-rounded cast film, where we end up having, of course, uh, like, a character like Don Cheadle comes in, and uh, they try to have Pepper Potts do a lot more, and so we really have it to where Tony is not completely carrying this film, and plus also... We insert right away into this film, S.H.I.E.L.D., to where eventually we have uh, S.H.I.E.L.D., who is going to eventually be not only in this film, but then starting to plop its way into others, which I kind of really enjoy the fact that, like, this movie started that off. To just say, like, okay, well, we're going to have a superhero, but there's probably going to be some kind of S.H.I.E.L.D. entity in some of these movies somewhere. To where we even have it to where even in uh, Far From Home, we're still having a S.H.I.E.L.D. presence even in that, which is that technically tied to Sony. Speaking of Spider-Man, really from the number of movies that Tony Stark eventually gets tied to, to where eventually we end up seeing him, him even in Spider-Man Homecoming is kind of just mind-boggling to me. How we see this character just be so integrated in so many films and we eventually, at some point, have to eventually see this character grow up so much that at some point we have to let it go. We have to say goodbye. And so eventually that happens at some point. 
Uh, but no spoilers. <laughs> so going into this, I think that's all that I wanted to say about this film uh, for cryptic like sense. I think now it's about that time to go and dive deep into talking about every little bit about this movie uh, from what all I can remember because there's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, really, it's kind of funny enough because I'm trying to review this film as well as me try to also reviewing uh, Thor Ragnarok right now. Um, so that could be interesting to eventually uh, try to remember all the things that end up going into Thor Ragnarok. Uh, and eventually I will go and backpedal because I want to try to cover every single uh, Avengers origin story, like go into every single like first of everything like i went into captain america now i need to go into eventually go into the first thor movie and uh like i'm trying to cover uh like black panther soon and uh try to get some of these like more prominent uh marvel films that eventually somebody might have heard of at some point right so let's go into that spoiler time if i haven't already because i think it's that coveted time to go into spoiler time, spoiler time, it's about that time I get to spoil this movie. So, excuse me, a lot of talking going on there. So, in the very beginning of this, we end up having Tony, who is to feel like he's getting court-martialed, because all the military uh, people that he is in the fun V with really just are dead silent and they're just kind of like not like should we talk to him should we not talk to him so we immediately have one of the military uh characters wanting to take a photo with uh tony and of course he ends up uh throwing up the peace sign and we end up having tony who mentions like like hey no gang signs it's like oh peace like yeah go ahead just <laughs> like peace is great i'd be out of a job with peace and so we end up having Tony who ends up talking to the driver, who I guess is a female, and he's like, oh my god, like, you have such great bone structure, like, I have a problem not looking at you now. <laughs> like, I didn't realize you were female, like, I'm sorry, like, like I didn't think about genders here, but uh, I'm having problems looking at you. Uh, and plus, we have one of the, also the other military people uh, that ask Tony if he uh, had been with all of the... Uh, uh calendar models or whatever and we end up having tony mention it. it's like well i didn't get in touch with one uh girl but uh it seems like the december uh cover of something was twins so he got that i guess so so we end up having eventually where there are shots uh shots being fired not drinking shots just bullets and shots being fired so we end up having uh, some of the military guys are to go and get out of the fun V and we immediately have it to where some of them are starting to get shot down. We end up having bullets being pelted through the fun V to where we end up having Tony who ends up having to forcibly leave this vehicle to try and scramble out of here to see like what he can do to protect himself. So we end up immediately having Tony who is trying to walk away from the fun V to where we end up having a rocket that has his name slapped on it going and uh and hitting tony to where he gets bounced back we end up seeing that tony seems to have some kind of bulletproof vest on but i guess that isn't good enough uh to protect tony and we end up seeing that tony's chest is starting to bleed and we end up having uh tony who is ending up falling onto the ground just hurt so we end up having Tony who is just kind of groggy and he wakes up and he is to be uh, kidnapped by the men of the Ten Rings. We end up having them doing uh, some kind of speech in their language to a camera uh, to, I guess, get a ransom for Tony. And so... We end up having Tony kind of waking up and he's kind of, uh, and then eventually he ends up going right back to sleep. That's when we get the Iron Man screen popping up to now eventually show us the lead up of where this ends up going into. So we immediately have it to where we are at some bizarre award show at uh, Caesar's Palace. We end up having the, the showing of 
uh, really in a very really interesting way. I like the way that they end up kind of rolling out how to help us understand who Tony Stark was. You can kind of see a lot of the photos are obviously photoshopped. <laughs> like they they like now looking at it now, like yeah, you can kind of tell that like that picture isn't like the best picture to like work with like what the environment is, but it is whatever. So we showcase Tony's whole life story where like he was a a brilliant guy who ended up coming up with all these inventions, meeting famous people. We end up also having uh, Howard Stark, who isn't the actual uh, Howard Stark that we get to know through other films and, and whichever. Like, this was just this Howard Stark that I'm like, couldn't they have just, like, reshot these things to, like, like give us, like, the updated version of a different Howard Stark that we seem to have, like, the MCU Howard Stark of things? Like, couldn't they have just reshot, like, a couple of scenes to, like, like... Think of this like you would think like uh, Star Wars. Like just kind of push that guy in there instead of actually like the uh, like the actual other Darth Vader kind of thing. Like push Anakin in there instead of uh, the actual Darth Vader. You can just do that. Like it would be a simple thing to just re-release this as a different cut of the movie. And I think people would be accepting of that. Uh, because I think a lot of people are just like, well, hey, like, they actually, like, did continuity and whatever, but then also, you would also have that, like, uh, whole, like, Terrence Howard thing where it's just like, well, yeah, but also they could also fix the, <laughs> they could have Don Cheeto come in there and, <laughs> and shoot him in there and, just, like, they could just CGI the whole entire thing and just have, like, no, like, if anything, like, Terrence Howard is fine as this character in this film, uh, in all honesty. So, going into this, we end up having this whole life story shown of Tony and his father, and that eventually his father had passed, and so Tony is now the uh, new face of Stark Industries, even though technically uh, he's not actually putting in the actual uh, company work. He ends up having an assistant that's kind of doing a bulk of his work for him, like basically... Uh, having uh pots just come in there and kind of uh have uh tony doing the yay or neighing of, of a lot of things so we end up having this whole presentation being done and over with and so we end up having uh we end up having Rhodey, who ends up going up onto the podium to give an award for tony stark to be the uh i think it's called the effigy award or something along those lines and so we end up having Rhodes who's like, okay, like, hey, this is a war for Tony Stark. Like, I'm so proud and so honored that I'm able to give this award away to nobody because Tony isn't even actually at the award show. We end up seeing uh, Tony who is actually doing uh, some dice rolling at some crap stable. And so we end up having Rhodes who consistently calls out for Tony, which he will not show. So we end up having Obadiah Stane who ends up taking the award uh, for Tony and says like well the problem with uh, the good thing and the and the problem with Tony is he's always working <laughs> not working very hard enough I guess but so we end up having Obadiah Stane who ends up taking the award for Tony and so we eventually have it to our roads eventually finds uh, Tony in the casino and so we end up having Rhodes who just hands over the award to Tony and he's like oh wow that's great like I never got one of those before and so we eventually have it to where Tony just hands this off this award off to just some random guy uh who looks like Caesar so he's like well like I need to give Caesar his Caesar award like there we go and so we end up having eventually Tony who is to go home for the day because really like Tony was just there to get the award that he didn't even care about getting or that he didn't even want to show up for. So we end up having Tony who ends up going off to uh, to go home for the day. And we end up having a reporter, uh, Christine Everhart, who is to try and get an interview with Tony. Not about the award show, basically about 
uh, how he feels about what he is doing right now. We end up having, of course, Everhart, who ends up telling uh, Tony that a lot of people have dubbed him the Da Vinci of their time. And we end up having Tony who mentions like, well, uh, that seems inaccurate because I don't paint. We end up having Everhart who mentions that uh, that also he has another name, which is the Merchant of Death. And so we end up having Tony going, uh-huh. And so we end up having Everhart who ends up asking Tony, it's like, well, like, are you completely okay with your company just really just doing a lot of war profiteering and that you're going to sell your arms to anybody who's willing to buy. And I end up having Tony who ends up mentioning like, well, like really like we have done a lot more things besides just like uh, building missiles and, and stuff along those lines. Like we've done a lot of other things. Like we've uh, gone and, uh, We've kind of done and built buildings. We've done all kinds of things. We've done a lot of charity and all kinds of other like uh, baby bottles and all kinds of things and just like other kind of advancements that can kind of put uh, Tony in good favor. We end up having Everhart who's like, well, like, yeah, it seems like you've memorized all this stuff by heart to just tell me when eventually someone is just telling you that you're a war profiteer. And he's like, yeah, uh, so what? And eventually we end up having Everhart who is like, yeah, and like, I bet your person that doesn't really lose sleep uh, that often uh, when, uh, when you're hear any hear of any of these accusations. And he's like, well, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm game to lose a couple hours of sleep with you to where, we have it to where eventually Tony and Everhart have this one night stand where we end up having Tony who doesn't even greet uh, Everhart when he is basically, let's just say, done with her. We end up having Tony who ends up going down to his basement to go and try to fix one of his hot rods. And so we have Everhart waking up to eventually have Jarvis tell her like, what the weather is. And so we end up having Pepper who ends up going and introducing uh, herself to Everhart. And so we end up having uh, Potts who end up, who ends up telling uh, Everhart that she is, uh, has all of her clothes dry cleaned for her and rare, rarity to go. And we end up having Everhart who's like saying like, Hey, like, don't you just kind of hate having to like wait hand and foot after uh, like, for Tony, like, you have to go and do all of his stuff for him, and we end up having a tour of Pepper Potts. is like, well, yeah, like, occasionally, like, I'll do some things here and there, and then also occasionally I also take out the trash, which is basically you. So, <laughs> we push on. So, we end up having Potts, who is to end up start, who is to end up asking Tony, uh, once she ends up greeting him, to... Uh, to yay or nay a bunch of things. We end up having Potts who is trying to scramble to get all these questions answered uh, from Tony because she actually wants to leave because today is actually her birthday. We end up having Tony's like, oh, it's your birthday? Happy birthday. Like, make sure you buy something uh, that uh, that's on me. And we end up having Potts is like, oh, well, I already did. And he's like, oh, was it good? And she's like, yeah, it's good. So... We end up having Potts asking him questions about like buying uh, an art uh, an art gallery thing of the spring period, and we end up having Tony asking as well, like, is it a perfect res res rep representation of the spring spring the season? And we end up having Potts who's saying like, well, no, like it's not like it's not the exact same thing. And so eventually, Tony just says, well, like I'll just buy it anyways. So. Like, uh, Potts says it's overpriced, but Tony says, I'll just buy it anyways. So, pushing on. So, we end up having Potts really wanting to desperately get Tony out of here because he needs to go on to his private jet to meet Rhodey, and he's late for it. And we end up having Tony mention it. It's like, well, it's my own personal private plane. Like, 
I shouldn't have to be late for anything because it's my own plane. Like, I can have them wait for however I want to have them wait for because, like, I can just keep giving them money until I get on the plane. So, we end up having Tony, who ends up going with Happy to, uh, I guess, chase down to make it to the plane. And so, we end up having, uh, we end up having... Uh, Happy, who ends up uh, having to double back because it seems that Tony had gotten the best of him through this car race uh, to get to this plane. So we end up having Rhodey, who is just kind of just really ticked off at this point because he's like, dude, I've been waiting here for like how many hours? And Tony is like, well, now like we're waiting on you, like get into the plane. So we end up having both uh, Tony and Rhodey who are basically getting smashed. They're both uh, drinking on this on this plane ride. And so we end up having the stewardess who are like doing all kinds of pole dances and all kinds of things for Tony and Rhodey. So we end up having really uh, Tony before this whole uh, dance parade. We end up having really Rhodey who is just kind of really angry with Tony, really just saying like, like, hey, like, I'm just your babysitter. Like, if you want a bottle, let me know. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm sick of this. Like, I'm tired of you. Like, I'm tired of waiting for you. And I'm tired of, like, uh, waiting for you hand and foot. Like, this is ridiculous. So, we eventually have Tony who tries to loosen Rhodey up, Rhodey up and get him drunk. And so, we end up having Rhodey who's going into this nonsense about uh, when he is to put on his suit on, uh, his, his military suit on, you know what he recognizes is that everyone who has that same exact suit has got his back. And we end up having Tony who's like, dude, I'm listening. I'm, I'm looking at the women dancing. Like, I'm not trying to listen to you. He's like, uh, like if anything, you're getting me like really distracted. And, and, and Rhodey's like, no, I won't get distracted. <laughs> like, I won't get distracted. Like, you can obviously tell that uh, Rhodey is just drunk at this point. And, like, Tony is just making fun of him. So, we go on, and so we end up having Tony, who is to do the presentation uh, to show off, to showcase these missiles, these Jericho missiles, where he is to make this speech about how this is how... Uh, America does it, this is how my dad did it, and it works out, it's been working out pretty well so far. And so, we end up having, of course, Tony doing this speech about the, uh, the weapon that you only have to fire once. And so, uh, for your, for your, for your consideration, the Jericho missile, and he fires it off, goes off, and everybody gets, like, blown away, and so... We have it to where, of course, uh, Tony is getting another uh, thing of alcohol to cheers to everybody to just say like, yeah, hey man, like, uh, like uh, for those of uh, for those of you who buy a number of them and more, like, <laughs> you'll get this along with it. So, so we end up having it to where this whole presentation is done. We have Tony going into the fun V. And that is where we are to end up having now Tony waking up in his cave uh, that he is to spend a number of months in this cave. So we have Tony who is resting in this bed now with these bandages all over his chest. And we end up having Tony who is to start to disconnect um, some wires from this car car battery and we end up having Jensen who's telling him no that's a mistake don't do that so we eventually have Tony who is tearing these bandages uh, away from him trying to figure out what Jensen had done to him and so we have it to where Tony's like what did you do to me and Jensen said dude I just saved your life like if anything there was some shrapnel or some shrapnel that had got into Tony's heart. And so really what Tony, uh, Tony's chest is encased with is a electromagnet that is to keep the shrapnel from getting to Tony's heart. So it's keeping him alive. So we end up having Tony now hooked up to a car battery. And so 
we end up having eventually the uh these men um Raza and uh and Ab- Abu Bakar um are coming in and eventually to tell Tony it's like well we want the Jericho missile and you're going to build that and we end up having Tony's like no I won't and so we eventually have um Abu uh kind of showing Tony eventually uh carrying him out to where the end of this cave is to show that they have a number of Stark's weapons and that really one more just won't make any difference. Like one bit of Jericho missile like won't make any difference because they have a slew of his weapons. And we end up having Tony who's looking in awe about all this. He's like, wow, looks like you guys have a number of my weapons. So we end up having eventually Tony who is to eventually tell Jensen like, well, like I'm going to say that we're going to build this Jericho missile, but instead we're going to build something completely different. Cause we end up having Tony who ends up making his heart or, or his chest, or uh, his, uh, his chest reactor. And we eventually have him saying like, well, like this is going to be like, uh, like charging my heart for, like a ton of lifetimes, but, or at some point for 15 minutes. So we end up having Tony who ends up making his arc reactor. And so we end up eventually having Tony who is to start to build all these pieces that a lot of the guys are kind of really confused about what Tony is actually building. They're trying to figure out through the visuals of the schematics of this, of this thing, like what Tony is building. It's like, well, is that like, is that the tail? Is that, what is that? So eventually Jensen and, uh, Jensen and Tony look like they're building something, but really we have it to a Raza and Abu, like don't know exactly what that is. So we eventually have it to a Raza is eventually going and taking, um, Jensen and, wanting to put a uh a burnt piece of uh of charcoal into Jensen's mouth to ask him what they are doing and we end up having consistently Jensen mentioning we're building the Jericho missile in in Raza's language and so we end up having Tony who ends up trying to stop them he's like hey like I need him like I, he need, like, he's a good assistant. I need him. So they end up stopping. They end up putting the charcoal right, right next to Jensen's face, but they just drop it. So we push on. So we end up having Tony, who is to eventually start to put this uh, Mark I Iron Man suit together, which is very much... Uh, like very like bulky looking, I guess, uh, this suit actually weighed altogether 100 pounds. Like whoever was to actually wear this suit, because maybe Tony didn't wear the whole entire thing. This whole first Mark one suit weighed 100 pounds. So think about that. When this guy was like walking out there, I just thought I was like, man, that's gotta suck. Like doing all this like stuff that he had to do with like a hundred pound thing strapped to his body that is crazy so we we go on and we end up having uh we end up having tony who is to put and have this like suit uh being latched onto him and we end up having jensen who is trying to put uh some downloads into tony so that way this suit can work and it seems that tony ends up needing more time because we end up having uh two of the uh, guys who are seeing what they're doing and they want to question things. And so we end up having both uh, terrorists who end up opening the door of this thing to see what they are doing. And there is a bomb that is strapped to the door and they end up getting killed. So we end up having Jensen who is to ask Tony, does he remember how many steps it was, it is to get out of here? And of course, Tony knows exactly the number of steps. So we go on and we have Jensen who is to realize that uh, 
uh, Tony is not going to be prepared uh, because there is a download that needs to be processed. So we have Jansen who is trying to give Tony some more time by firing guns randomly in the air to try to scare people. So we end up having Tony who is prepared to be Iron Man Mark One, And so we end up having uh, this really cool imagery of eventually Iron Man being this Mark I Iron Man. He's very intimidating. He's really scaring people. A lot of these moments that we see here is completely in the dark. And so like we don't get to see as much as we want to, but that is the whole purpose, to be scary, to be uh, something that eventually these terrorists will fear once they see this thing coming at them. Uh, really, we the most impressive visual is this Iron Man breaking down this door to where we end up having these guys that are just like, uh, like, and this thing is just breaking down the door. And so we have it to where eventually uh, Jensen is to scramble with his gun to realize there is a bunch of other uh, Raza and a bunch of other people with guns. And so we end up having Jensen, who sadly enough gets gunned down. So... We end up having uh, we end up having Tony who is to get stuck in one point, but he starts to consistently make it through this cave, and eventually we end up having Tony who is uh, seemingly quite easily going to with the rudimentary uh, rockets and fireworks and stuff like that that he does have at his disposal, which he shot shoots out. We end up having Tony eventually making it through to get to the opening of this cave to where eventually Raza is there to where we end up having Tony who ends up shooting some kind of uh, little missile out to hit Raza and burn half of his face. So we end up having Tony who desperately clings on to Jensen to say, hey man, like we're supposed to get out of here, you and me, remember? Like you need to go and see your family. And Jensen mentions Tony, it's like, I'm going to see my family because my family is already dead. So, we have it to where Jensen is telling Tony, don't waste your life, and we end up having this gun, gun, uh, gut-wrenching moment where, to where uh, Tony has to, like, dude, this is my best friend here. Like, this is my best friend. Like, this is a great friend of mine. And we end up having also Jensen mentioning that uh, he had seen Tony Stark at some uh, conference once before, probably in 1999. <laughs> in Switzerland or, or somewhere uh, in a quite possibly other movie. So we go on and we have Tony who ends up having to sadly leave Jensen who is dead, sadly enough. Spoilers. <laughs> this is already in spoilers. So we have Tony who ends up going and is like, dude, I'm not leaving here until I destroy every bit of every single weapon that they have of mine. And so we end up having Tony who ends up using his uh, like fire thrower thing to just go and blaze every single bit of all of these uh, weapons. And then we eventually have it to where there's so much fire that ends up going on. We end up having Tony who ends up hitting uh, a button to shoot out onto a destination that is far from this location. And he ends up smashing into the sand where he's like well good enough so we end up having tony who ends up going on and walking um repetitiously through the sands to eventually have uh luckily enough Rody eventually going and spotting him and eventually going and uh, retrieving tony to where Rhodes is to say like oh like uh, how about that fun V, huh? Like, if anything, like, you should be glued to me for the rest of your life. Because <laughs> luckily, like, Rhodes was trying to continue to try to find where Tony was. So, so going on, immediately we end up having, uh, Tony who ends up arriving, uh, to have Pepper Potts and Happy greeting him to to have uh, Tony mention, it's like, oh, well, uh, tears for your boss. And she's like, tears of joy. I hate job hunting. So we go on and we have, we end up having uh, Tony who immediately wants to do a press conference. So 
We end up having Tony who ends up doing a press conference to let everybody know that from here on out that, uh, one, he didn't say goodbye to his dad, but he also realized that this company has like a zero accountability that we've kind of been uh, selling arms to anybody that will buy and effective immediately, this company is no longer going to be in the uh, weapon making business. And so everybody's like, oh my God, that's ah. And so we have it to where everybody's like scrambling now. And we end up having everybody's like, oh my God, like this company is going to go like belly up. And like, we end up having like uh, stock market people that are telling people sell, sell, sell. Like, the Hindenburg ring any bells? So we go on and we have Tony who ends up doing this giant press conference where like we're having people having heart attacks right now of uh, being tied to Tony's company. And so we end up having Tony who is looking at the heart react or is looking at the giant uh, arc reactor that they have. And so we end up having Obadiah Stane who's like, God, like what you just did out there, like is going to murder our company. It's like, what are we going to do after this? Like, what can we implement after this? Because Obadiah Stain already knows because someone had told him about what Tony's next step is. And so we end up having Tony who ends up mentioning like, well, we're going to look into arc uh, reactor technology. And we end up having uh, Tony eventually show Obadiah Stain his chest. So we have it to where like Obadiah is like, yeah, like, uh, like uh, one last golden goose for us to be able to, uh, push this seemingly uh, battery that's going to run forever. And so we we go on, and so we end up having Tony, who is to go home to trying to fix and perfect his arc reactor. We end up having, eventually, Tony, who ends up scrambling pots to um, see if she has small enough hands to help him uh, fix things with uh, what is going on with his heart. We end up having Potts who ends up yanking uh, stuff out that she should not have and almost killing Tony while in the process. So we end up having Tony who is now putting in a new and or different arc reactor that is much more better than the first one that he has. And so we end up having Potts mention him like, well, are you going to keep your very first like arc reactor? And we end up having Tony's like, no, like I'm not very sentimental. Just get rid of it. But we end up having eventually Potts giving uh, this arc reactor, making it into a plaque to say like, well, proof that Tony Stark does have a heart. So we go on. And so we end up having, of course, uh, Tony, who is just kind of hiding away and trying to experiment. We end up having, of course, uh, Tony trying to figure out how to make a repulsor. And, of course, we end up having him going and shooting out this very fir first repulsor, and it kind of, like, blasts him back. So we eventually have it to where Potts is to tell um, Tony that Obadiah is to come uh, and talk to him about what it what happened in New York. It seems that Obadiah comes back with a thing of pizza to basically say that, yeah, like, if anything, like, the guys in New York, the investors, like, it just, like, is not going well. Like, because really, like, they need more. They need some kind of incentive. They need some kind of trust. So Obadiah is trying to desperately try and get Tony to give him the specs of the arc reactor and Tony's saying, no, like, I want this to be my own thing. And I want this to like, I want this to be mine. Cause really, I think Obadiah is trying to get this thing away from Tony. So we push on. So we end up having Tony who ends up uh, designing uh, repulsors to also not only go on to his hands, but then eventually go on to his feet. And eventually, we end up having, eventually, Tony, who figures out how to exactly fly. So, we end up having Tony, who ends up having his, uh, his dunser, his robot, to have it be on fire safety. And so, we end up having Tony, who is trying to learn how to be able to, uh, 
use his bit of uh, his power that he has. And we end up having Tony who mentions that, uh, like, he wants his, uh, like, feet being set at, like, 10%, and he ends up getting smacked into a wall. So he uh, instead uses both of his hand and feet repulsors only at 1% power. And so we end up having Tony who is flying all the way around his... Uh, all the way around his basement and eventually he's like yeah i can fly so we go on to eventually have tony eventually going into the mark ii suit so we end up having immediately tony who we have jarvis who's kind of putting every single safety precaution up and we end up having uh tony who's like no like we gotta learn to run before we can walk so we end up having Tony, who is to go and uh, fly with this Iron Man suit. And so immediately we end up having Tony, who wants to fly as high as he can get, which is basically up to the moon. So we end up having Tony, who ends up going all the way up into getting to the moon. And eventually he realizes that the suit ends up freezing. And that, as well as it freezing, we end up having also him realizing that uh, the suit just shuts off to where we have to have uh, Tony scramble to try to break the ice and to try to uh, be able to have this thing come back on again. And of course it does coincidentally right uh, to where he almost falls to his absolute death. So we end up having Tony who ends up flying back to his home to eventually just quickly shut off the power and we end up having him just falling through his entire home. And we end up having uh, the dunce uh, robot just dousing him out again. So we end up having Tony, who eventually is to put up the uh, the Mark III Iron Man suit, basically uh, make some adjustments of some satellite things and, and all kind of mathematical stuff eventually to have uh, the color be gold, but then eventually he's like, well, throw in a little bit of hot rod red. And Jarvis is like, well, yeah, of course, in case you want to be like really stealthy on your missions. So we have it to where Tony ends up seeing some get together, some party that uh, is being thrown. And so we end up having it to where the people are telling, uh, uh, the, the news anchors are telling, or the Reporters are saying that there is no way that Tony is going to be at this party. And so we end up having Tony showing up regardless because he's like, man, I'm just having a little cabin fever. And so we end up having eventually Obadiah Stane telling, uh, telling Tony that the person that had uh, placed an injunction on Tony had been, had been Obadiah that really, uh, he had tried to lock him out of company because he didn't like exactly what Tony had to say. And so really we have it to where Obadiah is kind of really just uh, getting Tony as far away as possible from this company as he can. So that way Obadiah can keep doing a lot of stuff that he should not have been doing. So, because eventually while... Tony is at this party. We eventually end up seeing that Everhart ends up showing up again. And we end up having Tony mention like, well, hey, like, you do realize that I've been away for months, like, held captive and whatever. And, and Everhart's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, you do realize that there are still, like, uh, Stark Industries weapons being sold off to some third world country somewhere still, like, after this has happened to you. And we end up having Tony realizing this and just scrambling and want to figure out who's dealing under uh, underneath the table. So we also end up having also Tony who ends up going off to uh, dance with Pepper and that uh, we end up having Pepper who's like, oh my God, I'm dancing with my boss. <laughs> like, and I'm not wearing deodorant. <laughs> and eventually we end up having Tony who ends up going and uh, supposedly getting a glass for Pepper after they whole, after they talk about things because uh, we end up having this almost romantic moment where Potts is like mentioning like, well, uh, 
like uh, if anything like it's kind of odd for like me to be dancing with my boss like that and like and how like I'm wearing this dress with no back and and so Tony's like yeah 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 whatever so like whatever we want to do who cares like no one's gonna care uh, so we end up having eventually Tony who ends up getting a drink and then eventually just vanishing and never seeing, uh, and never, and never going and, and, and giving, uh, pots her drink. He just ends up leaving. So we eventually have, uh, Tony who is to ask Pepper, uh, to eventually go and try to get all the information, uh, from Stark Industries to, to see who is dealing underneath the table. Because he wants to know. He wants to figure out. So Potts ends up going and downloading all this information. And we end up having Obadiah Stane. Who is trying to go to his top scientists. To try to figure out if they can recreate the arc reactor. Which they can't. And we end up having Tony. We end up having Obadiah. Who's like. Dude like this. Like Tony ended up like making this. In a cave with a box of scraps. Like how is it that we can't come up with the exact same thing. And or better. And we end up having, of course, the inventors, the people that are uh, eventually going to, at some point, be in Far From Home, telling uh, telling uh, Obadiah, it's like, well, I'm not Tony Stark. It's like, well, then you're going to get fired. So we eventually have it to where Obadiah is to go on to eventually go to Raza to really tell how far villainous this person is. We end up finding out that uh, Obadiah was tied to the Ten Rings and was tied to Raza and all those people uh, kidnapping o kidnapping Tony. And so we end up eventually having Obadiah, who ends up going to Raza, who ends up uh, who ended up collecting every single Mark One piece that uh, Tony had built and. We end up having Raza, who says, well, like, yeah, like, uh, you're going to give me an army of, uh, of iron soldiers. And, and so we end up having it to a reasonably since now, uh, Obadiah has the blueprint of what he should do to make an Iron Man suit from, from these pieces, we end up having... Obadiah, who ends up giving Raza a short-term paralysis, and we end up having Obadiah, who ends up saying, "Dude, just kill them all off. Like, take the take the Iron Man suit. We'll figure out how to make it from there." So we go on, and so we we eventually have it to where Tony is to. Uh, eventually go home after doing uh, after going to Golmera and taking out some of his old foes and eventually going and taking down some tanks and all kinds of things to eventually we end up having Iron Man kind of flying through the sky and we end up having uh, that kind of getting into uh, Rhodey and his military people like getting like this Iron Man suit on their radar to just like, Hey, like if anything like this Stark tech is going and uh, being in this location and now we have to figure out what this thing is. And so we eventually end up having Rhodey who ends up calling Tony to be like, Hey, like what's this piece of tech? I know it's yours. Like, like, and like, why, what is this? So we end up having Tony who ends up making up some excuses of him like running in a canyon or like driving to a canyon or whatever. And so we eventually have these jets that are scrambling to take out Iron Man. Eventually we end up having uh, Tony that has to tell the truth that it's me. It's in he's in a suit to Rhodey and that eventually Rhodey's like, oh, my God, like man, this is crazy. Like, this is, like, cool whatever he invented. And so we eventually have it to where one of the uh, jet pilots end up crashing into Iron Man, and eventually they end up having to eject. And so we end up having it to where uh, Iron Man ends up helping this guy get his parachute from his 
from his chair or whatever. And so we eventually have it to where Rhodey is like saying like, well, what should we tell the press? And it's like, well, tr tell him it was some training exercise and just try to like save face kind of thing. But Tony is asking Rhodey if he wants to be a part of this project that uh, Tony went to him and told him that like, hey man, I'm putting something together. Like I'm, uh, I'm doing something better than walking. Like I'm like, I'm like, I'm really getting something together and I really want you to be a part of it. And we end up having uh, really Rhodey who at that point in time was like, dude, you need to get your mind right. If anything, like, uh, like we end up having like Obadiah Stain's men like saying that it's post traumatic stress and stuff like that. And like Rhodes is kind of the same that he needs to get his mind right. And that eventually we end up having uh, Tony who ends up bringing this Iron Man suit together to eventually put his mind at ease. So we we push on. So Tony ends up going and trying to take the suit off, which is extremely hard. And we end up having Potts noticing that he has bullet holes in this Iron Man suit. And so we end up having Potts who wants Tony to, of course, stop being this Iron Man because he's going to get himself killed. And we end up having Tony's like, well, out of all the things that I've ever done, like, this is the one thing that, like, is the right thing to do. And you want me to stop. We have it to where, like, Tony mentions that, like, he's actually doing something right for once and something that this is all that he cares about. All he cares about is the next mission. There's nothing to sign. Like, he only cares about this and this alone. So we end up having eventually Potts saying, like, well, like, yeah, but you're all that I have. Like, you're all that I have left, too. So, like... Make sure that you try as much as possible to protect yourself because that's all that she has. It's just bottled up with Tony. So Tony is starting to realize that too. So pushing on. So we end up having Potts who is to uh, eventually leave her office after talking to Obadiah. And we end up having her eventually talking to uh, this guy. You might be familiar with him. He's called Coulson. Uh, he, he's putting together this organization that I think is called S.H.I.E.L.D. Eh, whatever with that. Like, that'll never be a thing. So we end up having, uh, we end up having Pepper, who ends up talking to uh, Coulson, and is to, like, spill all kinds of information about what is actually going on with her company and... and and giving uh, Coulson a debriefing about everything, which has them want to then scramble to try to uh, get all the information from Obadiah of all the stuff that he is building right now. Because we end up having Potts who ends up getting the blueprints for uh, what is to be Iron Monger. And so we end up having eventually Potts who is scrambling with Coulson to eventually take all this stuff from Obadiah. And so Obadiah is eventually going and putting this, uh, this thing together. And so we eventually end up having Tony who is eventually go and be at his home. And we end up having Obadiah who ends up going and giving Tony short term paralysis. And we end up having Obadiah who's to mention to Tony like, well, yeah, I thought that maybe me going and having you uh, kidnapped and put into a cave would uh, kill off my golden goose. But luckily you came back to me and you gave me one last uh, egg, which was the arc reactor. And so, plus also technically the other egg was the Iron Man suit. So we end up having... Uh, Obadiah, who ends up taking the arc reactor from Tony's chest, and eventually we end up having uh, Obadiah going off to eventually become Ironmonger. So we end up having Tony, who ends ending up dragging his, uh, his body to get to the other arc reactor, and he makes it to there and ends up popping um, his arc reactor back into his chest. We end up having Rhodes, who ends up scrambling to... Uh, to make it to Tony after uh, Rhodes is to get a call from Pepper about what they're doing. So we end up having Rhodey making it to Tony. And so uh, 
Tony is waking up to just be like, oh, well, like, like, well, if Potts is going with Coulson to try and to stop Obadiah, they're going to need a lot more men than what Coulson has. So we end up having Tony who ends up scrambling to get into the Iron Man suit. And we end up having, of course, uh, having Iron Man fly off. And we end up having, of course, Rhodes saying like, later, baby, to the, uh, to the arc, uh, to the Arc 2, or the Mark 2 suit. So, we end up having, uh, Ro or Tony telling Rhodes to keep the skies clear. So, we end up having Tony, who ends up scrambling to, uh, the building of which that Obis Diastane is in. We end up having Coulson breaking in through a bomb to get to, uh, see the Mark 1 suit, and Pepper's like, well, I thought it would be a little bit bigger, and so we end up having Obadiah end up ending up coming from the shadows with the Iron Monger suit, just demolishing uh, a lot of the S.H.I.E.L.D. members to eventually kind of chase after Pepper. And so we eventually have, of course, Tony flying in to try and not only protect Pepper, but try to like take down um, Iron Monger. We end up having them eventually going and like uh, eventually we end up finding finding out that uh, Iron Monger had been able to do this thing called fly, and so we end up having Iron Man who's just kind of like sweet, like have them fight out over the streets and to basically say uh, to basically have Iron Monger like telling him like uh, like all kinds of crap and like mention like stuff about his father and all kinds of things, kind of really making this. Uh, this battle very personal. And so we eventually have it to where Tony is to go on and try to fly up to the moon like he had done before. And we end up having uh, Jarvis consistently consistently telling Tony how much power is left on the, uh, on the arc reactor and Tony doesn't care. He's like, stop telling me. Leave it on the screen. So... We eventually end up having uh, Iron Man, who is to make it as far as he can. Eventually, we end up having the Iron Maker, the Iron Monger, getting as close as he can to Tony, and we end up eventually having uh, Tony mention like, "Hey, like, did you ever fix the freezing problem?" And Iron Monger is like, "Freezing problem," and like, "Yeah, you should probably check into that, or look into that." So we end up having Iron Monger, who is now like frozen and is now like falling from the sky to be like oh crap well i didn't think about this because tony already had that was his game plan so we push on and so we end up having uh iron man mention or iron mugger mention how like his suit is better than him in every way maybe not as flashy and maybe as not as whatever but uh really every single thing that Tony can do, Iron Monger can do, and do better. So we go on, and so we eventually end up having it to where, uh, since Tony's power is basically diminishing, we end up having it to where uh, Tony is going and starting to just try and get out of the suit because, uh, like, it's just going to wear him down. We end up having uh, Tony, who is to scramble to call Pepper and to tell her that she needs to blow the roof off of this, uh, off of this laboratory because, uh, he's going to try to get Ironmonger, like, he's going to sucker him in into this, uh, into this location to where they blow the roof and kill, uh, Ironmonger. So, we end up having Tony, who is to start to take off pieces off of his suit. We eventually end up having, eventually, uh, Ironmonger, like, crushing, uh, Iron Man's helmet. And so... We end up having uh, Iron Monger mention. It's like you know what I don't enjoy this kind of thing, but I'm actually deeply like, or like we have it to where it's like Iron Monger mentions that he doesn't really like this kind of thing, but he's deeply enjoying the suit. How really uh, Tony mentions that he wanted to rid the world of weapons, but he created the best one. And so we end up having eventually, at some point, Tony had tried to rip the targeting system off of or out of 
Ironmonger's neck because he's just trying to like pull at things just like, hey, this looks important. So we end up having uh, Ironmonger that is trying to fire off missiles and all kinds of fire, uh, shooting all kinds of things at uh, Tony um, because reasonably it's like, well, hey, like I have all these things at my disposal and uh, it's sad that he ripped out my targeting system because now like these things are just going wherever. So we end up having Ironmonger getting closer and closer to where eventually the uh, the Ironmonger is now basically almost the, where the point is of Tony mentioning that, hey, Potts, let her rip. Like, And so we end up having Potts who's like, well, yeah, but you'll die because you're right in that location. You're right in the kill zone. And so we end up having Tony's like, dude, like fire it anyways. So we end up having eventually Potts who ends up uh, – who ends up uh, – hitting the button to eventually have uh, Ironmonger get completely and utterly killed. But we end up having also Tony who is kind of end up, who is also ending up kind of at like, uh, like a horrible point in where he is. But we eventually have eventually uh, Tony who is to eventually recover and he is to eventually do a press conference telling everybody what had all happened we end up having Coulson, who's kind of giving the, giving him the layout of what all had actually happened, and that supposedly it's not actually Iron Man doing any number of these things. It's just this, like a bodyguard or something. So we end up having it to where really Tony is to go into this press conference, and we really have it to where it seems that uh, Earnhardt is to ask Tony it's like do you really think that we're gonna buy it some bodyguard it's like well do you really think it's me and it's like well all the list of character defects and all the mistakes that I've made it's like there's no way that like I would actually be this Iron Man character and like uh like as like exciting and thrilling as that would be or whatever but eventually have it to where Tony had stuck to the cards this time around because the last time that he didn't People blew up in his face. So we end up having, of course, to have uh, Tony mentions like, well, the truth is I am, I am Iron Man. And like everyone's like, oh, my God. So, yeah, uh, we really, I think, kind of wrap up this movie. And plus, I talked about it for an hour. So I think I want to wrap this whole review up. Get out of here. Just enjoy what is the rest of my still review day. So, yeah, this movie is... Like, I want to keep pulling back to it and just, like, keep saying that it's a fun film regardless of where uh, this movie does go. Uh, like, really, I think Marvel kind of really nailed the fact that they need to actually have their Marvel films be, like, comical, comedic. They can't take everything seriously because eventually people will just, like man, this is just like a real stretch of a movie. Like, I think this Iron Man film is like the last of their like serious films and they started to much more rely on comedy, uh, which worked out perfectly. How really we get a lot of comedic uh, movies more so than the serious like heart pumping uh, films. Like looking at the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man films or looking at like the early X-Men films, like everything was so serious about those movies and how really we get into a much more comedic approach within this film, I think was a much better way about doing things. So with that said, I'm going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.